Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In the beginning, there was God. The true God. The God of life. The triune God. And in the beginning... The true God, the living God, the triune God, creates. He speaks, and the heavens and the earth were created. But yet at that point, there was no life. The earth was formless and void. The Spirit of God hovering over the face of the deep. Yes, indeed, before God can create life, He must create a place, an environment that will sustain and support life. So God says, let there be light. And immediately at His word there is light. There can be no life without light. God speaks, the waters are created. God speaks again. And the atmosphere is created. So that of all the galaxies and stars and planets that God has created, this planet, Earth, would support and sustain life. And then, having created the environment to support life, water, the atmosphere, light, God begins to fill the Earth with life. He speaks, and the earth is filled with vegetation, plants and trees. He speaks again. The seas are filled with fish, the skies with birds. He speaks again. Land is filled with animals. Then it's time to create man. And already here, at the beginning catch our first glimpse of the Holy Trinity. For God says, let us make man in our image. In our likeness. That's what God does. But in a unique way from the rest of creation. Yes, the triune God. Forming man. God the Father. Taking the dust. Breathing into man, into Adam, the breath of life. And then from Adam, taking a rib and forming Eve, joining them together as husband and wife. And it's very good. It's what the Creator says of His creation. Places Adam and Eve there in that perfect Garden of Eden. Right there, the tree of life. So that Adam and Eve can enjoy that life, that perfect fellowship with God, that abundant life that God would have them enjoy. Yes, it was very good. There was life, perfection, glory, majesty. That's what Adam and Eve experienced. We all know it didn't last. For life would give way to death. Perfection to imperfection. Glory to shame. Majesty to brokenness. Yes, Adam and Eve rebel. They eat of the forbidden fruit. And into God's creation of life comes death. Into God's perfect creation comes sin. What does sin do? Sin separates us human creatures from our Creator. It divides us. Sin brings terrible effects upon God's creation. Sickness. Death. Sin changes our hearts. For indeed... Our hearts now by nature are not turned to God, but away from Him. 
falsely thinking we don't need God. Refusing to believe that all that we are, all that we have comes from Him, that He is the God from whom all blessings flow. Thinking that we are in control, we are in charge. That we are accountable to no one. Same human hearts. Instead of being perfect, instead of being filled with life, we're now filled with darkness and death. Anger and hatred and jealousy and resentment. That which is in here often manifests itself with those unkind words and those unloving actions. See it. Cain murders Abel. We see it with the, with, in our own day. The violence and the bloodshed in our own communities. Yes, God is life, the author of life. And yet, when sin comes into God's perfect creation, now we as God's creatures, we don't value the lives of others as we should. We see that brokenness. Instead of caring and supporting for Every other life. Loving our neighbors as ourselves. What do we see in the world today? Physical abuse. Verbal abuse. Human trafficking. The elderly, the disabled, ignored. Poor, the unemployed, the sick, forgotten. The unborn child in the womb, disregarded. Yes, creation is broken. And to this world of life, there is now death and decay. And yet God remains the God of life. The God who gives life, who wants His creation to enjoy that life that never ends. Who wants to restore that life that sin has broken. And so God the Father continues to create life. And as the loving Father continues to provide for that which He has created. Providing for you all that you need for this body and life. Because God wants you to have that abundant life. That eternal life. God the Father sends His only begotten Son to die to give you life. To die to conquer sin and death and the grave. So that you will not perish but have eternal life. God, the Holy Spirit, raises you from that spiritual death to new life so that now you are a new creation. For indeed, you have been made new in the waters of holy baptism. Baptized in the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You've received the teaching of the Lord. For you see, it is by baptism and by teaching, as Jesus teaches us in our Gospel reading for today, that disciples are made. But even more than that, through baptism and by the teaching of the Word of God, that's how you receive that life. That life that never ends. That's how the triune God comes to you to give you life. To give you His good gifts. That same Spirit who has raised you to that new spiritual life. So you are a new creation. That same Spirit who has made your body His temple. That's how much Your God values you and your life. That same Spirit now is at work in your heart, in your life. To transform you and me. To transform and to change our hearts. Hearts that are by nature dead and cold and callous. 
to hearts that are alive, filled with the Spirit, hearts that don't, hearts that aren't controlled by anger and jealousy and resentment, but hearts that are filled with love and care and compassion. Hearts that are so changed and transformed that we become ambassadors for life. That we begin to see others as God sees them. That every person has been created by God. God's handiwork, God's masterpiece. Every person so loved by God. That Jesus shed His blood and gave His life for that person. Every person so valuable and important to God. That God wants them to be with Him. Receive that life, that eternal life that never ends. Indeed, when we begin to see others as God sees them. And that's only by the work of the Holy Spirit changing us and transforming us. Well then indeed, our hearts are changed, our attitudes are changed, our words change, our actions change. As we see every person then as valuable, as important. As a life we're saving and protecting and supporting from conception to natural death. Where the world says disregard or ignore this life or this person. We come alongside by the power of the Holy Spirit. Standing with person that maybe has lost their job, the person that is poor, the person that's a victim of domestic abuse, the single parent family, family experiencing a tragic loss of someone they love. Someone that's disabled or sick. Someone that's living with the guilt and the shame of past sins. Yes, we become the very agents, the very messengers, the very ambassadors, the means by which God brings life and brings His new life to others. God, the Holy Spirit, empowers us and transforms our hearts to see the lives of others as the living God, the triune God, sees them. It goes one step further. You see the triune God wants you to see your life as God sees you. We can be incredibly hard on ourselves. Satan, of course, wants to devalue and demean our lives, thinking of ourselves as being insignificant, unimportant, that our lives lack value and meaning and purpose. Satan loves to bring to mind our past sins and failures as a way to devalue that created life and that new life in the Spirit. And then the world comes, and the world wants us to define ourselves and our value and our work. Not from the standpoint of God and who God has made us to be. No, the world says, your value is found in how successful you are, how much money you have, whatever talent you have. Even though none of those things last. So on this Trinity Sunday, the triune God comes to you again through the Word to declare to you who you are and whose you are. To invite you to see yourself 
as God sees you. And that's the one that really matters. Is it not? That you are God's masterpiece. That God hand-formed you in your mother's womb. Uniquely has gifted you. Loves you with an everlasting love. So much that He sent His only begotten Son who in love laid down His life for you. That's how valuable you are to the true God. So valuable, so important your life is that the Holy Spirit chooses to take up residence in your body. Making your body His temple. Forgiving you all your sins. Strengthening you for each day in this broken world with its sins and trials and troubles and challenges. Giving you His life through His Word and His Supper. Bringing you to that life that never ends. To the new Eden. The new creation. That world that is to come. Where the imperfection and the sin and the sickness, the devaluing of life will be no more. but joy and life and gladness. And so that's why we sing. That's why we rejoice this day. For our God, the triune God, is the living God. He is the God of life. He is your Creator, your Redeemer, your Sanctifier, your God, who has made you, who has given you new life, by the death of His Son, and by the indwelling of His Spirit. So that you have life now, and life forever. Amen. Please stand for prayer.